Ben and Letitia, at one point, this entire cul-de-sac where I'm standing was roped off with crime scene tape. Now you can see behind me the only thing left, blue evidence tape on the front door of this Lakeshore home. Letitia, I want to give you a really good look at this area. That is the back of the Publix shopping center here on Old St. Augustine Road. Now police say that this assault happened over here in this wooded area. I spoke to our crime and safety expert who says that there's a key detail in this case that could help police find the person responsible for this sexual assault. A political science expert at UNF breaks down for us what could happen this Tuesday based on their research and the effect it will have on candidates' campaigns. Keep in mind, when this man jumped off the Buckman Bridge, he was at the highest point of the bridge and there was a low tide. The officer tells me he dropped nearly 70 feet into the water. He says at that point, the water feels like concrete and there was a short period of time for him to get to him with the injuries he sustained. We're going to be there in about seven minutes to where this is all happening and we're going we're to be able to see a lot of the smoke that our viewers viewers are seeing now. John, this is what we've been showing everyone for the last two days. You can see that there is still a police presence here at the home. The FHP report says that the truck came through the yard you see behind me and actually hit this van that I'm standing behind. You can see right here all of the damage it caused to this van when it pushed it into the home, creating that hole right there. The driver of the truck then ended up right here at the corner. That standstill that you're talking about, you can see it right behind me. Miles of traffic that is backed up on 95 North. I want you to take a look over here. This is a deputy right here that's blocking this ramp on to 95 North. This is International Golf Parkway right here where all these cars are. Now further down is where we were able to get video of that crash. John, there are two homes down this road and to the left. Now there's only one way to get to and from those homes on this railroad track. And if there's a train that's stopped there, that means that they have to just wait until it decides to leave. You can see a lot of smoke that's um, pretty visible right behind me right now. You can see drivers creeping through. They're actually having to um, get some assistance from Highway Patrol to get down State Road 19. Yeah, we were on our way over to this neighborhood and I got an anonymous tip that there was a lot of police activity over here. And I wanna show you what's happened in the last 30 minutes. This uh, crime scene tape right here has gone up to block the entrance of the home. Definitely. I spoke to her father who says that both his wife and his daughter were shot twice. He says his daughter's injuries were much worse than his wife's because she was shot in her leg and her abdomen, which is why she's still here at the hospital. The glass on this front porch is now full of bullet holes. The same goes for the front door and walls inside. 5.30 in the morning and you woke up by, uh, I never heard the bullets come out of the gun. I just heard my wife screaming. Christopher Rewright says his wife Cheryl and 12 year old daughter Julia were sleeping in this front bedroom when someone unloaded more than 20 bullets into their home. He says his wife was screaming that his daughter had been shot before realizing that she also had been hit too. We got him to the floor in the next bedroom. You know, I ran outside to look for a car. But Rewright says whoever shot at the home had already taken off and we were there early Sunday morning as police worked the scene. Yellow markers scattered everywhere, just showing how many shell casings were left behind. Rewright says his wife has already been released from the hospital, but is staying with her daughter whose injuries were much more serious. He says he can't stop thinking about what his daughter said to him before she was taken to the hospital. Am I going to die, Dad? Am I going to die, Dad, going into an ambulance? It's just you can't hear stuff like that. Police say this could have possibly been drug-related. Rewrite tells me that his truck wasn't even in the driveway, so he knows it wasn't someone after him or anyone else that was inside when it happened. Whatever it was, it was, it was like a hit or I just, I don't know. I can't even imagine uh, someone trying to kill my family. I just don't understand. Rewrite says as for his house on Hilly Road, it is no longer safe and considered a home that his girls will ever come back to. They won't step foot in this house again. This is over. I feel for your safety just standing in my living room right now. Rewrite tells me that his son and his one and a half year old grandson were both in the house during that shooting and neither of them were injured. As for his daughter, he says that she will be released from UF Health in the next week. Reporting from UF Health, Katie McKee, CBS 47, Action News Jacks.